Audience, you may be seated. Graduates, you may be seated. Good evening, parents, grandparents, family members, friends, board, faculty, staff, and graduates. I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this evening's commencement exercise for the class of 2023. We are here to celebrate the person and works of our triune God, as well as the accomplishments of our graduating seniors. Greenville Christian School has, has a long and rich history of individuals whom God has worked in and through. I would like to ask anyone who is an alumnus of Greenville Christian School to please stand at this time. If you are an alumnus, please stand. Amen. I would like anyone who is a parent of a former graduate to please stand. Thank you. I would also like to recognize anyone in attendance this evening who has served as a past GCS board member, teacher, or staff, if you would please stand. <laughs> for each one of you, thank you for your contributions to this ministry and the advancement of the kingdom of God. This evening, our seniors will be taking their next step in life and last step at GCS before heading to college, work, or the military. We pray for our graduates that they would learn to live a life as clay in the hands of their potter, Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome and thank you for attending our graduation exercise this evening. I pray this evening will be honoring to our Lord. Join me in prayer. Father God, we come before you this evening, humbled by the talents that stand before us. But God, we recognize fully that you are the giver of those talents. Father, our prayer for these students as they go on from Greenville Christian School, God, is that they step in time with you. God, that every step is marked and they take every step with you. Father, that you would be honored as we honor these graduates, God, as we honor these families, we know, Father, that all the sacrifices required to bring us to this evening. Help us, God, to always bow before you. It's in your holy and blessed name we pray. Amen. This time I'm going to ask the high school choir to come to the stage. And as they're coming this way, I'll give you just a little bit of Trivia, I don't know if that's necessary this evening, but if you did not know, this high school choir is the TAPS 2A state champion high school choir.
the class of 2023 has some things they would like to share, beginning with their class verse. So our verse was 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. And the seniors want to share a little bit of the last 14 years of history. If you're going to share, let's step forward. Thirteen years ago, this family was started when Trey and I first walked into the halls of GC. Pre-K was a simpler time with days that consist of nap time, feeding Mr. Turtle, and eating gummy bears. Brenna, Stephanie, and Ezra joined us for kindergarten. Our biggest priority this year was filling up sticker charts to get a prize. Although the days felt long, most of them were spent napping on our makeshift bunk beds. One kid, sleep, one kid sleeping on top of a table and one kid under the table. Lastly, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that Thanksgiving was our favorite event of the year. We dressed up as pilgrims and Indians while enjoying our homemade dinner. First grade was a year of new adventures, from learning how to read and writing stories to the creature teacher bringing lizards and rabbits to class. In second grade, Matthew joined us. We knew it would be a good year when we walked into the classroom and there was a bathtub filled with pillows. Mrs. Wick's class was certainly memorable. Every Friday, we would cook a new treat that went along with our book from the week, such as jitter juice during the first week of school or Rice Krispies, Rice Krispie turkeys during Thanksgiving. This year, our class had a strange obsession with Duck Dynasty. In fact, we named all of our little chickens that we hatched after the characters from the show. In third grade, third grade was the year, our first year with Miss Travers and we were a little scared to have a principal as our teacher. The most memorable event from this year was definitely the Living History Museum. We spent weeks researching, memorizing, and decorating uh, to go back in time and become historical figures. Although this was memorable, our most tragic memory was when Maggie decided to cook her corn dog in the microwave with the foil still on. Fourth grade, we had no new additions in fourth grade, and apparently not that many memories either. The only thing that we all seem to remember are the blue tickets. If you won a game or simply had good behavior, you got a blue ticket. Every Friday, the ticket store would be open, and there would be so many things to pick from. Most of us majorly lacked self-control and spent all of our tickets on gum or little toys. Maggie and Stephanie, however, saved up all their tickets all year and bought a trip to Sweet Frogs. Shade and Jacob joined us in the fifth grade. This was the first year we had real classes, lockers, and a sense of freedom. This freedom went a little bit to our heads, and soon our class was banned from playing with balls at recess. Let's just say Keep Away got a little too intense, and we had to resort back to zombie tag. In the fifth grade, Matthew also spent an entire class period trying to convince Mrs. Simpson that we could live without the sun. Because obviously, we could just wear extra jackets and get gas from the gas station. In the sixth grade, Kenna joined us, and it was as crazy as the year before. This year, we began playing a new game where we ran around trying to tag each other's elbows. This was also the first year we were allowed to play sports. So between volleyball, cheer, football, and basketball, we had our hands full. Our memorable event from this year was Medieval Times, where the guys ate everything in sight and the girls got in trouble for posting on their Instagrams. Seventh grade. Lisa joined our class in the seventh grade due to the fact that she was already on the middle school cheer team. I think all of our best and worst memories this year were from Stardusters. If learning all the dances wasn't hard enough, we had to do it all while holding sweaty hands. Another big memory from seventh grade was pranking. I don't know how we convinced our parents to drive us around past midnight to sticky note and saran wrap each other's houses, but we did it quite often. Eighth grade. In the eighth grade, the dark year, myself and Noah joined our class. Let's just say that our class spent their fair share of time in the headmaster's office this year. 
Besides that, we also took a class trip to Austin and San Antonio this year. This trip holds many memories for us, such as long bus rides, chasing pigeons, sharing pickles, skipping rocks, getting splashed by Shamu, and giving the guys facials. In the ninth grade, Ezra joined our class just for the year. Freshman year was certainly an experience. This was the first year we could play varsity sports, which worked out great for some, but not so great for others. I think our most memorable event this year had to be freshman homecoming. This was the last year we had a homecoming dance, and it was for good reason. It was outside in the middle of October. Therefore, everyone just huddled around the fire and nobody danced. This year took a turn for the worse when COVID hit and we were all soon at home. In the 10th, in 10th grade, Matthew came back and, jo and Jack joined us halfway through the year. Since it was our first year post-COVID, we had to wear masks, but still tried to make the experiences as normal as possible. Rip to Jacob, who spent the entire year on a computer screen. This was definitely the year for relationships, whether it was finding someone new, bringing back the old, or going international. Our biggest obsession this year was banana bottle. If you can imagine everything a 10th grade boy would eat in one year, it was definitely in banana bottle. The 11th grade was a big year for our class. As a return for the third time, then Kaylee, me, and Trent and Anjo were new to our class. Our class was very welcoming. Jacob even gave Kaylee a big hug on the first day of school. We don't have to mention that he thought she was Lisa. This was also the year of Cotton Patch. Once Trenton got a job there, it was one after another, and half of our class had jobs serving. Our favorite day this year was very likely Valentine's Day, because who doesn't love skipping cl class, eating candy, going out to eat? Although that was one of our favorite days, I, couldn't, I wouldn't call it most memorable, memorable, because no one will ever forget Jacob wrecking his car right in front of GC on the first day of school. And now here we are, senior year. There are not enough words to describe everything we did this year, but if we could only use one word, it would be fish. This all started when we decided this would be our best year and would take over the school. We restarted our vlog another day at GC and student council, so we decided we needed an office too. Thanks to the bases, we didn't have to search for long. Since it was our senior season, we decided to have dress up themes for every game, which sparked our love for fish. We had everyone dress up as fishermen, and we carried around a live catfish named Noodle in a bucket. May he rest in peace, or maybe just pieces. This was only the start of it, because one Friday we found ourselves in Petco buying a blue and red fish. We decided to name him Al, since he was Allegiant Colors. Al was a little bit lonely in his tank, so we decided to buy him a friend, a baby catfish that we simply named Baby. Baby has since passed away, but never forgotten. <laughs> I'm gonna make them stay standing. They didn't know that. I have a reason for it. I'll explain in a minute. But right now, I wanna recognize academic excellence. Students that have been gifted by God have been good stewards of their time and talents in reaching academic goals. The first that I wanna recognize is our salutatorian. This year's salutatorian is Ms. Brenna Safer. With an she has an overall numeric average of 98.1915. Thank you, Ms. Brenna. And then I want to recognize our valedictorian. Mr. Nicholas Shade Gladden. Who has an overall numeric average of 101.1277. In a moment, Shade's going to speak. Graduates? 
You may be seated. Before shade begins, I just have to tell you, sometimes as administrators, you know a little of the crazy that's going on and you just let it happen. On the far side of the stage is a fish <laughs> that snuck in by the valedictorian because as they said, fish has been a theme. Graduates, yes, I noticed. <laughs> Shade, the stage is yours. Good evening. Thank you all for thank you all for being here. First of all, I have to thank the esports team for making me who I am today. <laughs> and this is the first esports team in GCS history, in case you didn't know. But to be perfectly honest, I would much rather be sitting back in my seat than standing up here before you. Some of you know I've been struggling with what I was going to say in my speech and if I was going to take it seriously. I didn't want to give the typical, oh my gosh, guys, we finally did it type of speech. Instead, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Every time I've thought about what I was going to say, the story has come to my mind. It might seem a little bit ridiculous, but I hope it's something at least one person needs to hear tonight. This past March, our school's theater department, including myself, put on Shrek the Musical. The night before my final show, I wrote Miss Brown a personal letter, thanking her. The following morning, before church, I wanted to attach a picture to the letter, so I needed a paper clip. I checked our, junk, I checked our box of office supplies, but none were to be found. Next, I check our junk drawer. And of course, if you can't find something in the junk drawer, you lose all hope of finding it. I leave my house to go to church, thinking I'll just have to figure it out somehow later. As soon as I arrive to church, I head to Sunday school. After a few minutes, one of our teachers, David Diggs, tells us to close our eyes and hold out our hands. I do so, and he places an object in my hand. As I'm feeling the object, I get goosebumps all down my arms. At first, I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, but after a few seconds, I was sure that I was holding a paperclip. Less than 30 minutes before need, from needing a paperclip, my need had been fulfilled spontaneously. Never before that day had I needed a paperclip, much less been randomly handed one. I was amazed. Some may chalk it up to coincidence, but I believe in a God who is a provider. And that's exactly my point. I've seen God provide for me and my family over and over again. It's been evident by my ability to attend this school. God cares about each and every person, even down to the minute little details. It would have been fine if I had to go without a paperclip, but to God, it's important that his children get their paperclip. If you're struggling and don't know how you're going to make it and don't have a relationship with God, I hope you change that today. To my classmates, Many of you will think, or I've already thanked the influential people in your life, such as your fathers. But make sure you also thank your Heavenly Father for everything he has done for you. I hope we all, myself included, remember to stay close to God as we go off. It will get easier and easier to say, oh, I'll go to church next week. Then weeks and months go by and you haven't gone to church. I'm just graduating and I'm already seeing the ways that God is going to challenge me next year at college. Real life is hard. There's no point in going alone, especially when we have a God who loves us with open arms. See, I told you guys that I could take it seriously. Before I give up my microphone privileges, I want to thank those who helped to make our school run smoothly. Of course, I have to thank our fish, Al. If you didn't see him already, he's over there. He has a very busy schedule, so we thank him for being here tonight. Thank you to the administrators, the board members, and the teachers who work tirelessly to see that we get a solid education and a safe environment. I know many of you have obligations outside of our school, but you always do a great job here at school regardless, and it is evident how much you truly care for the students here at GCS. Thank you to the parents and guardians who help with our events, teams, and so much more around our school. And finally, thank you to my classmates for making my high school experience so great. It's going to be rough to not have you guys around all the time. Finally, I want to close by reminding you to subscribe to our YouTube channel.
I don't know if you saw the QR codes that Brenna made for us. They're on all those senior tables. You can scan that. And we have spent this last year recording memories from our year and making YouTube videos. And we have a part one video of our trip from Puerto Rico up right now. And there's going to be two more coming out soon. Thank you. Just as we recognize academic excellence, one of the things we also want to recognize is God's faithfulness. And we're going to recognize two individuals. These are children of graduates of Greenville Christian School. First, I'm going to ask Ms. Lacey Fiesel to come up on stage. Lacey is the graduate of the first K-12 through graduating class of Greenville Christian School that graduated in 1989. And she is graduating her last child this evening, Ms. Maggie Fiesel. And I'm going to ask Ms. Michelle McCarthy to come up on stage. She is the salutatorian of the 1998 class, and her son is graduating today, Mr. Jacob McCarthy. And there are some scholarships that we're going to recognize this evening. These are related to Greenville Christian School. The first is the Student Council Sarah Paul Memorial Scholarship. And to present this scholarship is Mr. and Mrs. Victor Paul. Good evening. My name is Victor Paul. My wife Cindy and I were blessed to be the parents of Sarah Paul, who was a student at GCS from the day she started kindergarten in 1994 until October 27, 2005, when suddenly the Lord called her home during her junior year. While running out in our backyard after school, her heart just stopped. Since her homegoing, GCS and the Eagle Nation Student Council have sponsored the Sarah Paul Servants Heart Scholarship in her memory to honor a student who exemplifies the student who most reflects her servant-hearted spirit, zeal for righteousness, heart for God, and love for those they encounter in life. None of the student body here now would have known Sarah, and while tonight's prime focus rightly goes to the recipient of the award, who I'll get to shortly, since this is the first time in a good while that I've had the opportunity to brag on my daughter in front of folks like this, I trust you'll indulge me a bit. Sarah was smart, sharp as a tack and precocious, among the things Lewis Smith said in his eulogy of Sarah were the following. Teachers don't have favorite students. Everybody knows that. It somehow wouldn't be very professional of us to prefer one to another. But hypothetically speaking, if there was one that outshone all the others, one that brought more joy into my life, one that made me more glad that I took up teaching as my life's work, her name would be Sarah Paul. The first thing I noticed about Sarah was that she got it. She had it figured out. All the random things that I threw out in the course of a day's lecture, be it pop culture references, political humor, cartoons, jokes, you name it, the stuff that in the mind of the average seventh grader goes straight about six feet over their head, Sarah caught it. You could see it by the sparkle in her eyes and you could hear it in her laugh. And she laughed a lot. She frequently admonished me in the course of her assignments when I asked my freshman U.S. history class to come up with a plan of uh, post-Civil War and reconstruction on their own. She said at the end of hers, I don't know if this would have worked or not. It might have brought disaster to the country, but that's what you get for putting the fate of the nation in the hands of a 14-year-old blonde. 
Well, Sarah was a stubborn and strong-willed child, but she forged that into a zeal for righteousness and wasn't afraid to tell it like it was to her peers. Back in the dark ages before the dominance of Facebook, she wrote a blog on a website called Zanga under the name Rapunzel the Blonde. Six weeks before she died, she posted that she was currently reading Passion and Purity, Learning to Bring Your Love Life Under Christ's Control by Elizabeth Elliot. And in a post she entitled Radical Ratings, Second Edition, Radical, Radical Rantings, Second Edition, she said, you know what flippin' drives me up the wall? These little 14-year-old girls who go through boyfriends like I go through a bag of Skittles. If you can't stick with the one you've got, stay single. And they throw out the word so care, love so carelessly. Let me spell it out for you. You don't love him. If you did, you wouldn't be with someone else three weeks later. Y'all's poor future husbands. Raise your standards. Sarah was a straight shooter. She told it like it was. Lastly, like this year's recipient, Sarah had a love for God's word. In the days after she died, while Cindy and I were going through her things, we found a notebook she kept entitled, The Book of Cool Verses That Stick Out To Me, written in her own flowing calligraphy. As we opened it up, the very first verse that she had written down was Psalm 116, 15. In the upper left-hand corner, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We took a scan of that to the Monument Company, and today it's engraved on the back of her tombstone, written as it were in her own hand. But enough about Sarah. I'd like now to turn your attention to this year's recipient of the Sarah Paul Award. This young man has persevered through the difficulty of losing his earthly father at a young age, something that I too experienced. Like him, I learned to leave even more in my Heavenly Father and grew spiritually as a result. He's pretty much a straight-A student. In a letter of recommendation from Van Sickle Baptist Church, I read that he has grown into one of the key leaders of their student ministry and is eager to help wherever he can, from leading Bible studies, sharing his testimony, volunteering in the children's ministry, and leading on mission trips. He works hard to keep his grades up while holding down a job and worked his way through Boy Scouts all the way to Eagle. He is, by all accounts, an exceptional and hardworking student who displays exemplary character. I'm informed that he intends to become a pastor or missionary after obtaining a Christian ministries degree from East Texas Baptist University. It's my great privilege to present to you this year's recipient of the Sarah Paul Servants Heart Award in the amount of $1,000 to the best server the Cotton Patch Cafe will ever have, Trenton Matlack. The days that followed Sarah's death were difficult, but the one thing I remember, Victor, <clears throat> was the note in the locker that she had left for the friend that said, ha ha, I get to go home early, because she got out of school early that day, and did that have a different meaning for us? At this time, the booster team is going to recognize the recipients of the booster team scholarship and Ms. Mona Gilley. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you to everyone that helps with Booster. Um, because of, we are so blessed with all the donations and things that parents help and provide, we are able to fund two scholarships, a female athlete and a male athlete scholarship. God has not only answered our prayers for being able to give two awards in the amount of the scholarships uh, are $750 each. The scholarship applications that we received this year <coughs> made a tough choice. Uh, we were able to award these two uh, scholarships during the process of the applications or written an essay answering some key questions such as explaining what the GC athletic program has meant to them how participation in athletics has helped to prepare them for life after GC. Describing their participation in athletics and one of my most favorite memories, uh, my most favorite, their most memorable moment before 
Uh, the board receives the applications. An outside person removes the names and assigns each application a number to provide anonymity. Then the booster team board votes individually, and this year's scholarships awards go to Maggie Fiesel. And our male athlete goes to Jacob McCarthy. Thank you. I'm going to ask Mr. Brad Pletcher to come. The last scholarship is the Christian Character Scholarship. Good evening. The Christian Character Scholarship Award is presented annually to the senior who has demonstrated a high standard of Christian living. This scholarship, while given by the Greenville Christian Board of Trustees, is in honor of Nancy Bam, who served the Lord faithfully for many years at GCS. This year's recipient of the Christian Scholarship is It's on the outside of the envelope. Mr. Shade Gladden. It is both an honor and a privilege and a little scary for what's about to happen next, Mr. Shastine. The senior class decides who it is that they want to speak they would like to hear from, and they all chose Mr. John Chastain. Well, good to see everybody here tonight. Hello, graduates. It's really an honor to be here. How did I come to be here? Well, in 2021, I, gra I, I graduated. I retired, that's, that's graduation. I retired from Paris Junior College and I found myself in Mr. Reisner's office and uh, trying to, you know, what could I do at Greenville Christian School? And I felt my arm twisting and he said, you ever thought about teaching a leadership class? And uh, so that's how I got involved. I, I taught these young folks their leadership class in their junior year, and then most of them took my dual credit psychology course as well. So I had, I had two courses with them their junior year and just really just fell in love with this class. Wonderful group of young people. I mean, the best group of young people I've, I've been around. And I've been around a lot of young people working at the college for 20-something years. But I want to just say how, how honored I am to be here uh, to share this, share a message. Uh, of encouragement uh, with this, this graduating class at Greenville Christian School. Uh, before I talk to the graduates tonight, I want to say a word to the parents, uh, grandparents, uh, families of our graduates. Job well done. Job well done. You did it. There were times I know that you thought that you wouldn't make it to this night. Uh, I know from experience, I know how you feel. Mrs. Shastain and I, we raised three children and we've been right where you are three different times. And I know how it feels. There's such a mixture of emotions, uh, but, uh, but this is a night to celebrate uh, as a family. So wonderful, congratulations, you made it. Uh, to the faculty, staff, administrators, and executive board of GCS, just look right up here. These graduates are in part, they're products of your countless days of service and many uh, early mornings spent in prayer. We have, we have prayer at least four days a week in the mornings before school starts and we pray. Sometimes we really need to pray. And we pray for our students. Students who have been prayed for over and over and over and over again over the years. 
And so we celebrate, we celebrate with you. But tonight, tonight I'm here to primarily talk to these graduates, and uh, I, have, I have a three-part message for you. Three-part message. It's, it's real, real simple. We're going to celebrate with you. I do have a, a little a short warning for you, and then we'll end with a, a blessing for you. First of all, we celebrate, I celebrate your, your accomplishment of being here on this night. Graduation from high school is a special time. It's one of those important markers in your life. Through the course of your life, you'll think about this night. You'll think about your high school years many, many times uh, through the course of your life. In fact, when I was uh, preparing this message, it dawned on me that it's been exactly 40 years since I graduated from high school. Uh, on a very warm Friday evening in the end of May, I was one of 46 graduates at Callisburg High School, 1983, uh, sitting exactly where you are. And uh, so I, I and just, just thinking about that, it was the home of Mighty, Moon, Mighty Maroon Pride and Callisburg Wildcats. Uh, just thinking about that, it brings back a lot of memories. Uh, graduation from high school brings, it brings a rush of emotions. I remember it well. And some of you are probably feeling a sense of sadness for all your friends and classmates that you'll no longer see on a daily basis. But you know what? That's a good thing. Because you know what that means? That means that you made valuable friendships and relationships in your, in your time that you're growing up. And that's a blessing. Some of you are feeling a sense of relief. I can't believe I made it. I actually made it. Did I really pass that math class? Is Mr. Witt gonna recalculate and figure out that I really, I didn't pass that math class? I just wanna say, if you're up here on this stage, it's all good. You passed, you made it, all is well. Some of you are feeling butterflies in your stomach, excitement for the future, because the future is wide open. It's wide open. The possibilities are endless. I remember that feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. Now, you graduates are probably going to remember a story or stories I told related to this back in leadership class, but in thinking about the future, on graduation night, one of the things that I was most excited about was something that the audience is probably going to think is a little strange, but I was excited about air conditioning. Air conditioning. And you're probably thinking, how strange is that to talk about air conditioning in a commencement address? It's kind of strange. It's true, though. One of the many things that I was thinking about on graduation night was air conditioning. I knew that air conditioning was in my future because my dad, you see, didn't believe in air conditioning, believe it or not. I think I told you all about that. Uh, growing up on the farm, he thought that air conditioning would make you soft, and, and instead of being out there in the summertime doing the work you have to do on a farm and ranch, you'd be cuddled up under the air conditioner watching TV, so he didn't believe in air conditioning. And a lot of my memories of my growing up are related to not having air conditioning. So on graduation night, I was excited about air conditioning being, being in my future. But some of you are like I was, you're feeling a little giddy inside because you're finally gonna be free. You're gonna be free. You're thinking that you can do, you can finally do things the way you wanna do them. I mean, if you want to eat fruity pebbles all day long, if you want to, you can. If you, uh, if you, uh, if you want to eat dessert before every meal, you can. In fact, if you want to eat dessert as your meal, uh, you can every, every time. If you want to stay up as late as ni at night as you want to, you can. And on and on it goes. You're excited about that sense of freedom. Now, parents... We'll let them bask in that giddy feeling for a little while, but we know that the reality of adulthood will set in in due time. The fact is, graduates, you have come upon something you will encounter many times in your adult life, and that is a fork in the road. 
It's a period of transition. And times of transition usually present us with a choice, and that's exactly where you are tonight. You're at a place of making many choices. And this is where I come to the second part of my message to you, and, and I say, I, I say this, this second part of my message in love, just a simple warning. A simple but important warning. And here's my warning. Don't stand still. Move forward. Move forward. Keep moving forward. Move forward with your goals. Move forward with your relationships. Move forward in your service to our Lord. Times of transition present us with blessings, but they also present us with, they can present us with a danger. Change can create stress. Stress can create feelings, sometimes even of depression. And we can get into a valley of, of indecision. And in the valley of indecision, we can get immobilized. And we can begin to think that there are no good choices. And re but remember this, there are always good choices to make. There are always good choices to make. Just keep looking up for them. Most importantly, keep at the forefront of your mind that something you've been hearing since your first day at GCS, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Never forget that. The most important thing in life is to keep our Lord first. Keep him first. Jesus said, seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. He did not say, just coast along and you'll stumble upon it somehow. He didn't say that. Also never forget that Jesus defined the parameters of our relationship with him. In his teaching of his disciples, he wanted to help them understand their need for him. Life is too hard. Our circumstances can be too heavy for us to bear. Our our sin nature is too pervasive for us to just fight it with our willpower. Jesus said these words, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. What is Jesus saying? He's saying that we cannot bear the burdens of our existence alone. We can't do it. We will crumple under the pressure. And... Given the agricultural way of life of the day, Jesus' disciples would have understood exactly what he meant by that teaching. They would have known that he was speaking of, this is a very foreign idea to us, but he was speaking of the relationship between a fully developed, mature oxen and an immature, weaker oxen. The weaker oxen was always yoked, put beside and yoked to a mature oxen who would pull most of the load and in the process would train the younger, weaker oxen. So I'm sure you see what the, re the relationship here that Jesus was teaching. When the going gets tough in your adult life, and it will, you need to lean on Jesus. Lean into Jesus. You're yoked to him. Lean into Jesus. Let him bear the weight of the load. And my best advice to you is this. Face this world on your knees, in your prayer closet, if you know what I mean. Face this world and all the circumstances you're going to go through, good and bad, face them on your knees in prayer with our Lord. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. So hold on to the one who has overcome the world. He will help you get through it. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And I also want to add this. If you make a mistake, and you will, if you, if, when you make a mistake, make sure you run to Jesus and not away from him. Running away from God leads to no good place. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I, said, I told you all a little bit of my story back, in, back then. I'm not going to tell you more now. But I'm just going to say this. I've been to that place. I've already visited that place of running from God. 
And I'm telling you, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there but heartache. Running away from God, going your own path, it's not freedom. It's bondage that ultimately leads to despair. And I want to add this. The enemy does not play fair. The enemy of our souls does not play fair. After he leads you down a wrong path, he then belittles you and then accuses you and beats you up. That's why the enemy in Holy Scripture is called the accuser of the saints. His goal is to try to make you run away from God, hide from God, run, run away from God's kingdom, run away from your calling. That's his goal. The Apostle John told us something that you need to have memorized. Hopefully you have. I know you've memorized a lot of Scripture at GCS over the years. Hopefully you'll say this with me as I say it. The Apostle John said, if we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Keep that in mind. And inside my warning to you is also an encouragement. Some of you are going to go to college right away. Some are going to go into the military. Some are going to work for a while and figure things out. Doesn't matter. All good paths. I don't care which path you take, but I do have a strong word of encouragement no matter your path. Seek a Christian community. Seek a Christian community. Be a part of a Christian community. Never, ever stop being a part of a Christian community. I don't care if you I don't, care if you don't know anybody there at first. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. You'll get to know people as you plug yourself in and make yourself available. And I mean this with all my heart because I have distinct memories of not doing this. This is part of my warning and encouragement. I have distinct memories of not doing what I'm, I'm gonna tell you to do. Do what I did not do when I started college. See, I was, I was a Christian. I gave my life to Christ as a young teenager. I was baptized and was very active in church and all those things. When I started college, I didn't do this, and I want you to do this. When you hit your first foot on that college campus, I want you to run to the nearest Christian ministries on that campus. Usually you'll have a lot of choices. Don't leave it to chance. Don't think, I'll, you know, I'll run into somebody involved in a campus ministry and meet them and, and, and so forth. Now, don't think like that. Uh, go find them. Those Christian ministries on campus, they, they exist for you. They want you to be a part of them. They will welcome you, so go find them. Uh, if you're going into the military, uh, you, you need to join a Bible study there in your unit, wherever you are. And if there's not a Bible study available, then be the leader you were nurtured to be at Greenville Christian School and start a Bible study. Be the catalyst for a Bible study fellowship where you are. If, you, if, you, if it, your path is to work and save money, figure things out, that's great. Stay involved in your local church. Stay involved in your local church. Wherever you go, whatever your plans, always, always, always be involved in a strong Christian community that encourages you to pray, be in God's holy word, fellowship with other Christians, and to stay plugged into not the great suggestion of our Lord, but the great commission of our Lord. Stay plugged in to that great commission. And I'm giving you this warning with experience. I didn't do that, I'm sad to say. And I suffered for it greatly for several years. I made the mistake of just kind of coasting along, just taking things as they come, and I ended up taking my newfound freedom of young adulthood and using it to indulge myself instead of seeking our Lord. And it didn't happen all at once. It's the, the proverbial frog in the water that's heating up. The frog doesn't know it's he's gonna be boiling. It didn't happen all at once. But I suffered for it greatly in the end. And I'll say, were it not for the street evangelism ministry that my wife, Mrs. Shastine, was involved in at UNT, uh, I don't know where I, would have been, where I would be. 
You see, Mrs. Shastine did what she did, what I'm encouraging you to do. She stayed plugged into a good church. She used her freedom in college to be a part of evangelism ministries to reach college students for Christ. And it was the ministry she was involved in that helped bring me back to Christ. And along the way, God blessed me with a wonderful Christian wife. So listen to me in this. The Bible doesn't say that when we just coast along haphazardly, he will guide us in our journey. The Bible doesn't say that when we use our freedom to indulge ourselves that he will, he will keep us on the path. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean into the Lord. And the last part of my, my message here is a blessing, and I mean it. I want you to understand something. All the Bible classes you've taken, and from elementary all the way through high school, they were not just boxes you check off as part of your academic experience at GCS. And I, and I know sometimes it probably felt that way as you had to study or t for a test or whatever. But I want you to reevaluate it all. And you'll have more time to do that as in the days to come. I want you to reevaluate all of that and, uh, and your time at your church and Sunday school and youth groups and all the other things Christian ministries have been a part of. And I want you to let it boil down to this right here. Jesus is your blessing. Jesus is the path you follow. Jesus is the motivation to stay on the path. Jesus is your strength to stay on the path. Jesus is the love you share and, re and receive with others as you are on the path. Jesus is the correcting influence to steer you back on the path if you, if you make a wrong turn. And at the end of the path, at the end of the journey, Jesus is your reward. He is your good shepherd. Not just a verse you memorized. He is your good shepherd. He is leading you to good pasture. So follow him. Follow him. He has good plans for you. Don't look to the right or left at other people's lives. Run your race. Run your race with Jesus as your guide. Your path is your path. You're not in a race with anybody else. You're on a path of following Jesus to your destiny. And if you do these things, you will be a success. I don't care what your career path looks like. And don't be surprised that as you follow the Lord, he will take you places that you never dreamed of. God loves to surprise us. I've had him surprise me many times. And I can't leave you with a better blessing than what God's servant, the Apostle Paul, told the church of Ephesus. You may have memorized these words. Receive these words, live in expectation of these words. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his, through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations forever and ever and ever. Amen. So my parting words to you are this. Go with God. Go with God. Go with God. Amen? Amen. Thank you.
We are now to what is the presentation of diplomas. Mr. Reisner is going to take a spot as he hands diplomas, and our board president, Mr. Byron Britton, is going to help them move a tassel, right? Parents, when I call your graduate's name, I'm going to ask you to stand and remain standing until your graduate returns to their seat. Now, they're going to continue standing at their seat, but you may be seated at that point, and another graduate will be called. First row, please stand. Lisa Jane Adams. Lisa is the daughter of Matt and Nikki Adams. Lisa entered Greenville Christian School in the seventh grade. While attending GCS, Lisa was a member of the National Honor Society and was Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Student of the Year nominee all four years, completing fundraising totals of over $25,000. Her teachers have this to say about Lisa. When I hear the word overcomer, I think of you. You have and met every challenge life has thrown you and have been challenged more than most. My manager. She had a way of calming me down when coaching, just a smile or a pat on the back and I would stop yelling at the refs. Your quiet demeanor and gentle smile mask a will of iron. You are going to carpe some diem. Lisa has this message for her family and friends. Thank you to my teachers and coaches for helping make my experience at GCS memorable. Thank you to my grandparents for always supporting me. Thank you to the Davis family for the many opportunities y'all have given me. Thank you for raising me like your own daughter and making me a part of your family. Thank you to my brother for always being so supportive. Thank you for sacrificing many weekends to travel to my competitions. Most importantly, thank you to my parents for raising me to be a strong woman and always making sure I know my worth. Thank you all for ca taking care of me after all my surgeries. Thank you all for always believing in me and growing me into the person I am today. I wouldn't be standing here right now if it wasn't for y'all. Isaiah 41.10 is Lisa's favorite verse. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Following graduation, Lisa plans to attend the University of Texas at Tyler, pursue a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology with an emphasis in athletic training. <laughs> Stephanie Rebecca Ashley. Stephanie is the daughter of Deanne and Wesley Ashley. She entered Greenville Christian School in kindergarten. Her teachers have these words. The girl with two first names and a lot of personality. Stephanie was always in the know. If you need to know anything, ask Stephanie, even if she didn't know or only halfway knew. Steph Stephanie's honors include National Honor Society, four years of volleyball and softball, and high honor roll. Her favorite verse is John 16, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Her words to family and friends, thank you to all the teachers for pushing me to do better and for being patient with me, especially Mrs. Brown and Mr. Witt. Thank you to the office ladies for always excusing my absences and greeting me with a smile, even if I was 20 minutes late to my first class. Thank you to Mimi and Pops for allowing me to do so many activities at the school and always paying for the gas it took to get there. She plans on attending the University of Arkansas for a degree in criminology and criminal justice. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Bass. She's the daughter of Lee Bass. She entered Greenville Christian School in the 11th grade. Her memories include making it to the all-region choir her junior year and making it to all-region choir her senior year and actually finally passing math class. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you while I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, Isaiah 41.10. Her teacher said, when you let go of everything and just sing, you are amazing. 
I pray that you're able to let go and let God, to use your voice to bring him praise. You're made for this. Her words to family, Mom, I want to say thank you for putting up with my attitude through these years. I love you more than two whole worlds. Pop, at the beginning of this year, when I had a hard time, you told me to go to school for you and for Nana. Well, I did. I told myself that every morning. Thank you, Pop. I love you. Gollum, you truly have been a pain to live across from. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not special and don't let anyone push you around. I love you. Yanni, we've been best friends since my freshman year. I love you and proud of the mom you've become. Also, when you go back to school, don't ask me to help with math. I've been in algebra for way too long. Zach, you've been the brother I never got to have. Thank you for always being there. Emily plans on going to college for psychology and kinesiology and also attending a trade school for cosmetology and welding. <laughs> Madeline Elise Carroll Carlton. She is the daughter of Keith and Emily Carlton. She entered GCS in the eighth grade. Her memories include National Honor Society, being student council president, and maintaining the honor roll or high honor roll all of high school. Her favorite verse is Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul. Her words of gratitude. Mom and dad, thank you for always being there for me and pushing me to do hard things. Thank you for praying over me every day and showing me an example of godly parents. I would not be where I am now without y'all. Grace, thank you for always showing up when I needed you. Thank you for always helping me get ready for events and dances. You are my best friend, and I am so grateful to have a close relationship with you. Classmates, thank you for loving me no matter what. I am so thankful that I have been able to build relationships with all of you. You all have been my closest friends for five years, and it will be so hard to move away and go my separate way. It has truly been an amazing ride, and I will always be praying for you. Sick them. Her teachers say, <laughs> Maddie, you have such a kind heart. Your graceful presence and soft voice have been a much needed balance to a class with more than its share of boisterous extroverts. The world needs more people like you, except there's only one, there's no one exactly like you, is there? I hope you will enrich other people's lives as much as you have enriched ours. Maddie plans to go to Baylor University, majoring in education. Jack Carter, son of Tina Gilmore and Patrick Gilmore. Jack entered GCS in the 10th grade. His teacher said, Jack is tall. <laughs> but wait, there's more. You are quiet, but that doesn't mean you don't have an opinion. You're just keeping it to yourself. That is the beginning of wisdom, or maybe just a little mischievous. I appreciate how you've always greeted me warmly and reminded me that you miss me when you see me especially if it's been a while. Jack's memories include making his coaches happy when he played for them, making new friends, and graduating. His favorite verse is Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. He says, thank you for being with me through everything. In the hard times, you were always there to help. I cannot thank you enough. Jack plans to go to Eastfield and Dallas for IT. First row, you may be seated. Second row, please stand. Maggie Morrow Fiesel. Maggie. Maggie is the daughter of Kelly and Lacey Fiesel. She entered Greenville Christian School in pre-kindergarten. And her honors include Student Council Vice President, National Honor Society, and this year's recipient of the David Award for Godly Leadership. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The teacher's words, Mags, your giggles are contagious. 
Half the time, I don't even know what you're laughing at, and I'm pretty sure you don't either. Keep that joy. Your enthusiasm for life, your wacky sense of humor, and your love of learning have enriched my classroom for six years. Stay crazy, sweet girl. The youngest of the Fiesel Four, you're the best one. Don't tell the others I said that. Seriously, though, you have a quiet strength of character coupled with a powerful lead with me that, doesn't, that o- doesn't often put you in front of the audience, but for those who are watching, we know where leadership is really coming from. She even led the singing on the bus for away volleyball games. Believe it or not, those bus rides and her singing will be greatly missed. Maggie's words to family and friends, to my mom, thank you so much for pushing me to do my best and always giving me the best godly advice. To my dad, I would have never understood what hard work looks like without your perfect example of how to be a godly servant. I thank you for always providing for us and being the bus driver for all of my games. To my siblings, y'all are the best. I would have never gotten out of my weird middle school phase without y'all. Also, thank you for making life so exciting. To my classmates, I'm so blessed to be a part of such a fun and close class. I'm gonna miss y'all more than you know. I love all of y'all, and I'm forever grateful for the memories we've made. Maggie plans to attend Texas Tech University and major in retail management. (laughs) Nicholas Shade Gladden. Shade is the son of John Daniel Gladden and Ray Mosley Gladden. He entered Greenville Christian School in fifth grade. His memories include National Honor Society, National Rural, and Small Town Recognition Program, an outstanding contribution for drama. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Matthew 6, 34. His teachers say this, you are way too easygoing for this class. Valedictorians are supposed to be high maintenance, laser focused, but not you. You just keep doing your thing and don't seem to worry about what others think. That is a rare gift. You excel. I'm not sure how many Eagle Scout valedictorian thespians have come through GCS, but you're the best. Shade says, I would like to thank my parents for always making me their priority, even when times were rough, and for always pushing me to do my best. Mrs. Brown, for getting me on the stage, and lots of fun memories. My youth minister, Angela Hudgens, for being a godly role model. My three best friends, Ezra, Trenton, and Kaylee, and my sister, Kinsey, for being the best sister a brother could ask for. Shade will be attending the University of Texas at Tyler and majoring in computer science. Kaylee Jordan Hedges. Kaylee is the daughter of Andrew Hedges, Heather Basie, Ricky Basie, and Rhonda Hedges. She entered Greenville Christian School in the 11th grade. Her teachers say, I'm so glad that Kaylee joined the GCS family as a junior. You entered the school quietly, but you made a huge difference. I love to see your contributions in volleyball and track on the chapel worship team in the classroom. Kaylee has a spirit of quiet determination and a dedication to do things well. I am confident that whatever she pursues next will be tackled with the same great attitude. Kaylee's honors include National Honor Society and receiving state honors in volleyball, track, and cross country. Her favorite verse is Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Her words to family and friends, thank you for being my biggest supporters when I was constantly busy with homework, sports, and life in general. To my coaches, thank you for pushing me to be a better athlete and helping me to achieve my goals. I wouldn't be where I am without you guys. And to my classmates, thank you for being so welcoming when I first came to the GC. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you all. Love you guys. Kaylee plans on attending Pratt Community College and furthering her education and playing volleyball. Noah Holt. 
Noah is the son of Julie Holt and Justin and Simone Holt. He entered Greenville Christian School in the eighth grade. Asked what his accolades are, he said, being picked up, picking up a SEAL contract, being first team, all district, four years in a row, and third place in the 4 by 400 state track. His favorite verse is John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. His words to family and friends, thank you for always supporting me and guiding me through difficult times, and thank you for doing what was best for me even when I didn't necessarily enjoy it. To my classmates, we finished, but the race is just beginning. This was only a minor stepping stone for greater things. I say chase what God calls you to, calls you to be with relentlessness and ambition like no other. When times get tough, lean into them, grow from them, take every opportunity to become better. You can't always control your circumstances, but you can control your attitude. So find joy in everything and push others to be the best they can. The goal is not to sprint and burn out now, but to go all in and endure life's trials with a willingness to suffer to further his kingdom. His teachers say, Noah, you're a rock. And the reason we didn't get mirrors in the weight room. <laughs> Academically sound, athletically gifted, and hungry for new challenges, Everyone talks about your work ethic and the results you get, but I see fierce determination. When you set your mind to it, there is nothing you cannot accomplish. Just remember your gifts come from God and set your mind on Him. Noah plans on joining the Navy and becoming a Navy SEAL. Second row, you may be seated. Third row, please stand. Joseph Allen Lumby. Joseph is the son of James and Amor Lumby. He entered GCS in 11th grade. His honors include first team all district defensive tackle and National Honor Society. His favorite verse, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. His teachers, a hey, big Joe. I'm going to miss your enthusiasm for learning and our long discussions about everything from the Cowboys' prospects for the next season to presidential politics to the state of the world. Stay curious. Gentleman Joe. He's always respectful and courteous. His bright smile lightens the day. Joe says, thank you for making my senior year something worth remembering. To my family, I want to say thank you for making my life possible. And to my classmates, I want to say thank you for being there with me while I grew physically, mentally, and spiritually. Joe plans to attend William Jewell College, pursuing a degree in electrical engineering and playing football. <laughs> Trenton Matlack. He's the son of Brenda and Kendall Lynchfield. Trenton joined Greenville Christian School in the 11th grade. His teachers had this to say. My most distinct memory of Trenton was a day when I overheard a group of students complaining about a teacher and someone asked Trenton what he thought. Trenton responded with words of kind affirmation and asked the students to look for the good in that teacher because he knew the teacher was looking for the good in them. You have already in your long life, young life had a great impact for the kingdom of God. You are solid in your faith and are ministering to others through prayer every day. You're a gentle giant in your Christian walk, which will serve you and those you meet for eternity. His honors in high school include getting his Eagle Scout, being top of his physics class, and earning high honor roll. His favorite verse is John 16, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Trenton says, Dear Mom, thank you for trying your hardest to be the best mom. Even in hard times, you were always pushing me to do the right thing and be a good person, even when I drove you crazy. I will never forget the millions of daily lessons you've given me through the years. Dear Kendall, thank you for putting up with this family, especially me. 
I'll forever be grateful for the father figure you've been to me. You've taught me so much and have the best stepdad I could have asked for. Dear Josh and Sarah, thanks for being there for me during those hard times and being the other older siblings I needed. P.S., a special thanks for all the fast food you brought me when I was a kid. And a last thank you to Mr. Danny Gladden. I know you really like me. Thanks for that. <laughs> Trenton plans to go to ETBU for a Christian ministries degree and then later to seminary. <laughs> Jacob Ethan McCarthy. Jacob is the son of Michelle McCarthy, grandparents John and Susan Payne. He entered GCS in fifth grade. His honors include high honor roll for all four years, sophomore of the year scholarship, and having won multiple golf tournaments. His teachers say your drive and determination are admirable. Don't forget to always play fair, especially when no one is looking. The only thing better than playing the best round of golf is knowing you played it with integrity. John 13, seven, Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. His words, dear family and friends, thank you for always supporting me and my needs throughout my life. Without y'all, I can confidently say I would not be where I am today. I'm so grateful to have all of you in my life. Dear mom, thank you so much for believing in me and supporting me. I wanna thank you so much for all the sacrifices you have made for me and Noah. You're amazing and keep pushing forward. Dear Noah, you're one of the coolest kids I know and I can't wait to see what incredible man you'll become. Take care of mom while I'm gone. Dear Nan and Pat, thank you for being there for me. I'm gonna miss your home cooked meals and playing golf with y'all every weekend. Y'all are the best grandparents I could have ever asked for. I love y'all. Jacob plans to attend Dallas Baptist University to pursue a degree in biology and later move on to medical school to become a cardiothoracic surgeon. Ezra Rodarte. I told them they couldn't have anything that stuck up on their hat. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Ezra is the son of Miriam Rodarte. He entered Greenville Christian School in kindergarten and then in and out a little bit, but he's made it. His memories include surviving basketball for three years, doing the play three times, and passing Mrs. Griner's class. His favorite verse, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Words from teachers. You know that magic trick where the magician takes a quarter out of your ear, then makes it disappear, then it shows up in your hand, before you can touch it, it disappears again, only to finally rest on your nose? That's Ezra. Somehow the class managed to survive without you the two times you disappeared, but it was always more fun when you were there. I'm so glad that Ezra found his way back to GCS the last two years. I always love to watch his performances from his duet at Drama and Desserts to Sebastian and Cinderella to a dancing guard skeleton and blind mouse in Shrek. Ezra always brings a lot of energy and fun wherever he goes. You are so talented and intelligent. I know you're going to go far in life. I admire your strong character and steady devotion to Christ. Keep following him and he will light your path. Ezra's words, Mom, Tia, Gloria, thank you so much for the opportunity to come to GC. I will forever be in debt to y'all. To my classmates, words cannot describe how much y'all mean to me. I love y'all, for real. I pray the best for all of you. Ezra's plans are to do a summer at PJC a year at Austin Community and transfer to a college where he can study physical therapy. Third row, you may be seated. Fourth row, please stand.
Brenna Claire Safer. <laughs> Brenna is the daughter of Thomas and Patty Safer. She entered Greenville Christian School in kindergarten. Her accolades include senior class president, National Honor Society president, and student council historian. Her favorite verse is Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Her words to family. To my parents, thank you for always loving and supporting me in all that I do. To my siblings, thank you for being there for me even when we're apart. To my teammates and coaches, thank you for always pushing me to be better and standing by my side. To my Sadies, I love you both so much and cannot wait to see who you become throughout high school. And finally, to my classmates, my favorite people in the world, I can't imagine living life without y'all and I will miss this class more than anything. One of her teachers says, the process of science generates a lot of dirty dishes. Brenna stepped up to be one of my student aides and keep my lab clean. I always enjoyed our conversations those days. Brenna was always likes to remind me that scientists are lazy, but only in the best way. If we can find a shortcut, we will. May she take this spirit of efficiency with her in whatever she pursues. Oh, Brenda, you were the center for information and planning. Without you, this class would have been just a normal class. Keep drawing people into activities. Maybe you should consider something like that as a career. Brenna plans to attend, to major in apparel, merchandising, and product development at the University of Arkansas. Woo pig. <laughs> McKenna Taylor Sullivan. Kenna is the daughter of Tim and Mindy Sullivan. She entered Greenville Christian School in the sixth grade. Her high school accolades include Iron Woman, two-time NCA All-American cheerleader and member of National Honor Society. Her teachers say, hey, Kenna, I just wanted you to know that you haven't flown under my radar even though you've tried. You are a brilliant young woman with a strong intellect and a drive to succeed combined with a powerful faith. I know you're going to enjoy college life and all the challenges it presents, and I have confidence you will amaze your teachers there just as you have amazed me. Scripture says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 20. Kenna's words, to all those who have been by my side these last 17 years, thank you. Mom, you've always pushed me to do my best and shown me nothing but love and support along the way. Dad, you know how much I love you. You're my hero and have always been willing to drop anything for me. Logan, I'm so thankful to have you as a brother. You repeatedly put me first, even though sometimes I'm not so nice to you. To my teammates, teachers, and coaches, thank you for the constant encouragement and stability in my life. A huge thank you to Kyler and his family for putting up with me and always making me feel special. I can't wait to see the plans God has for my future. Kenna plans to attend the University of Texas at Tyler and, and pursue a major in nursing. Matthew Allen Sundin. Matthew is the son of Michael and, Michael and Emily Sundin. He entered Greenville Christian School in second grade. His honors include first team all district football, merit roll for all years of high school, and the unsung hero award, Joshua. His teacher said, did you ever meet a kid and think when he grows up, man, did you. You grew up physically, but even more important, you have matured as a human being. Keep growing. You did your best to hide your light under a bushel, my friend, but I could still see it shining. You're funny, strong, opinionated, but you have a deep curiosity about the world and a willingness to listen to alternative viewpoints. Your work ethic is impressive. I've come to respect you deeply, and I know you're going to be a success at whatever you do. His favorite verse says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9.
Matthew says, first I want to thank my mom and dad. I want to thank them for supporting me throughout all of high school. I want to thank my dad for always encouraging me in the sports I played, especially in football. My dad and I spent a lot of time training and getting ready for the next season. My dad offered me a lot of wisdom and taught me the fundamentals of football. I want to thank my mom for always encouraging me in my academics. She would always proofread all my English writing assignments and help me with my grammar mistakes. Thank you for being the best mom ever. Claire, thank you for being my built-in best friend and being there, even though we fight a lot. I want to give special thanks to both sets of my grandparents for always showing up to all my sporting events and cheering loud for me. In the fall, Matthew will take an EMT course at Paris Junior College, and during the spring, he will enter the Fire Academy at Kilgore College. <laughs> Trey Witt. Trey is the son of Tom and Tracy Witt. He entered Greenville Christian School in pre-K. His honors include being mascot for at least nine years, being in the play for at least six years, and he's this year's recipient of the Daniel Award for personal Christian integrity. His favorite verse is Psalm 119, 9 through 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Class, thank you for the good times. Y'all are amazing. Special thanks to my workout buddies and the corner. Family, thank you for always being there to help me when I need it and bring, being supportive. Mom, thank you for always having my back. Dad, thanks for challenging me, even when I didn't want to be challenged. Tommy, thank you for always protecting me from bullies and mean people in the world who would do me harm. If only there was someone to protect me from you. Just kidding. Maybe. Nana, thank you for never missing anything I did. From mascot to musical, you were always there. Papa, thank you for always supporting me, even when you couldn't be in Texas. Cousins, thanks. Yeah, that about sums it up. Thanks. His teachers, no doubt you are as aware of your hand difference as those that meet you, but you seem to know that everyone is different and you hold on to things that you find precious better than most with full fingers. Remember, you are not defined by what makes you different. Rather, you define yourself by the difference you make. You make a difference. You're a clever problem solver. Don't hide your light under a bushel. You're so entertaining. Trey, my brilliant Padawan, it's hard to believe you're finally leaving us. I'll miss the cheesy jokes, the Star Wars references, and the mentoring of your grandchildren in seventh grade. You're gonna, wig you're gonna win the game of life bigly. I've enjoyed watching Trey as Ed of the Eagle for the last several years. There was never a time he shied away from wearing the hot costume and always giving high fives and hugs, especially to the littlest fans. I will always remember him as the true mascot when I think about Eddie the Eagle. Trey plans on pursuing a career in information technology, and he hasn't given up on being a mascot. Graduates, please stand. Congregation, I'm going to ask you to stand as well as we sing Great is Thy Faithfulness, sort of the school song, played on the piano by Mr. Levi Smith, and led by senior members of the GC Choir. Oh God. 
this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Kelly Fiesel to come forward and close us, or begin the closing, but to pray for these graduates. Please pray with me. Father, we come to you this evening thankful, thankful for um, a day of celebrating, a day to celebrate these 17 young men and young women. It's been a great day to recognize them, to recognize their accomplishments. And Lord, I pray that they would um, cherish the memories that they've made. They would cherish the friendships that they have developed and created with each other. And I pray, Lord, that as they go forward with their goals and the desires and the dreams that they have, for themselves, for, for their future, that as we have all witnessed each one of these um, young women and young men display a gift and the ability to serve, to serve each other, to serve each other as friends, um, giving advice, lending an ear, and serving our school in serving our school well. And I pray as they embark on this next um, adventure that they will serve those they work for, serve those they work with, but most of all, I pray that they would serve you and serve you well, that they would grow closer to you, they would grow to know you more, and they would grow to love you more. Protect them as they leave. Help them to be a witness for you. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Got to end with one last pop quiz. We're going to see how well you do. Y'all ready? Take your position down there for the picture. Go. Leave the diplomas there. All right. I think that's what it says. Because whenever you announce it, they're going to throw a cheer, right? So this is you. Ladies and gentlemen, by the power of the State of Texas and the Board of Trustees for Greenville Christian School, 
I present to you the graduated class of 2023. Congratulations. I have no idea. That's okay. You are invited. You're invited. <laughs> You're invited. Right out here in the foyer, there's tables set up. Graduates would love hugs and all of those kinds of greetings. But you're invited to be a part of that, and you are dismissed. This video has been brought to you by Juice. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming.